The sun is tilted by six degrees with respect to the plane of the planets. The reason for the non-zero solar obliquity has been a mystery since it was first discovered by Sir Richard Carrington in the mid-1800s. It turns out that planet nine um, can actually tilt the sun. The, the fact that the sun is tilted, even if it's only by six degrees, the fact that the sun is tilted, you know, the sun is the most massive thing in our solar system by a huge margin, and it's oriented differently than everything else in the solar system. That is an incredibly strange phenomenon for which there really has have not been that many explanations even attempted over the last 150 years. It's naturally explained by Planet Nine being exactly where we think Planet Nine is, which uh, it's one of these mysteries that's now that we think is now solved that's been such a mystery that people haven't even really talked about it very much over the last 150 years because it's just been so difficult to think of what it is. It has been known since the mid-1800s that the sun is tilted over the years. People have put forth various explanations for it. One possibility is that the sun uh, was interacting with the protoplanetary disk um, via magnetic fields. Um, it's also possible that the disk was just asymmetrical from the beginning. And it's also possible that the sun actually had a stellar companion a long time ago. It was a, a moment of inspiration. Not all projects start out this way. Not all results really come. Some of them come, you know, it slowly dawns on you. We were sitting in Constantine's office one afternoon and we were, we were actually thinking about a different problem entirely, which is how Planet Nine would interact with these very distant objects in the Kuiper Belt that made us originally think that Planet Nine was there. And in just a moment, as we're, we're thinking about it, and we're doing this with our hands, trying to think of directions things are going, I think we both realized at about the same time, it's like, oh, it's going to make the sun look tilted too. And it was very clear from the way we did our fingers that it was going to make an effect. What we didn't know until we did the calculations was how much of an effect was it going to have and in what direction was it going to go. But we knew it had to do something. Planet Nine has been scattered out into the distant solar system. So because it has a low orbital period that's so long, it has an enormous amount of angular momentum, right? as much almost as the rest of the solar system combined. So even though as an object it is not as massive as Jupiter, it has a huge lever bar. Right? And using that lever bar, it can effectively torque the rest of the disk of the solar system by six degrees over the age of the sun. Next, uh, always next on our list, is find the planet. Um, we think we have it narrowed down to a pretty small patch in the sky that we have to look at. Small patch in the sky still means we need many, many nights on the telescope. Uh, we we're pretty convinced that by uh, maybe next, the end of next winter, we will have been able to cover enough sky that we'll actually be able to find it. When we find it, we both show that this hypothesis has been correct. We learn about it, but we also see how much of the sun, how, how it should have tilted the sun too, and see if this is the only thing that's been tilted in the sun or if other things are around doing it. When we looked at the outer solar system, we, we realized that while most of the, the very distant objects, these objects beyond Neptune, beyond Pluto, most of these objects, they, they all go around the sun and they're all sort of pointing off in all different directions, but the most distant objects all swing out in one direction in, in, in a very strange way that shouldn't happen. And we realized that the only way we could get them to all swing in one direction is if there is a massive planet also very distant in the solar system, keeping them in place while they all go around the sun. And we started looking at this and thinking, this, this, is, this must be either a coincidence or it's uh, caused by something else. It can't be caused by a planet because that's crazy. There are no planets out there. I went from trying very hard to be skeptical that what we were talking about was true to suddenly thinking, oh, this actually might even be true. So the object itself likely is more massive than the Earth probably a little bit less massive than Neptune. It sits right in between that terrestrial to giant icy planet range. Its orbit 
unlike the orbits of the known planets, is not nearly circular and planar. Instead, it is exceptionally wide, 20 times bigger than the orbit of Neptune. The orbital period of the Earth is, of course, one year. Right? The orbital period of Jupiter, the big player in our solar system, is about 10 years. The orbital period of this putative ninth planet is 20,000 years. We have nothing like it in the solar system, so it's new for us. It is, however, the most common mass of planets that have been found around all of the other stars. People have always looked at all these other planets in this strange mass range and said, wow, I wonder what these are. I don't know what these are because we don't have anything like it in the solar system. Looks like maybe we do. I'm really hoping that as we announce this, people, people start a, uh, a worldwide search to go find this ninth planet. Again, solar stream is coming from the right. That's where the sun is. All the plasma in the blue is being blown backwards. That's a part of our protective shield here. Two hours missing, 537, exactly the same time. Everything goes haywire. Come up to that point again. Everything's coming from the right. Bam. Now the black lines are our field lines. That's our magnetic field lines. Very important. They have now bent backwards at this point. People have talked about Planet X, Nibiru, uh, Planet 7. If there's an object come in, coming in, would it have orbiting planets? Would it have debris with it? So this is some stuff that piqued my curiosity that I'm sharing with you here. All of this stuff will be linked. I suggest you go to the Caltech thing and watch the whole video. But anyways, I'm going to try and get through this quickly for you. Planet X to really cause mass extinction this month. This is April 9th, 2016. We're going to come down here. Thanks to science, we know that the larger the celestial body, the bigger its gravity, and consequently its ability to affect other, smaller bodies around it. We've known of Jupiter's crucial role in protecting us from asteroids for quite some time now, but the mysterious Nibiru could very well do the opposite, and some say there's good reason to believe it. We're going to come down here. A retired astrophysics professor from the University of Louisiana, Daniel Whitmire, is saying Nibiru has all but arrived to our neck of the woods, and that the destruction brought about by its gravitational trickery will take place this very April, as it's done numerous times before. Then we're going to come down here. Earlier this year, we started seeing space anomalies manifesting in a small group of objects, which have been taking on a peculiar orbit. Only something 10 times the size of the Earth, as theorized with Nibiru, could influence celestial objects in such a way, according to a study from Caltech. The anomaly was picked up on in the Kuiper Belt, which stretches all the way past Neptune, and it resurrected a 100-year debate. And then we're going to come over here, because again, this stuff just piqued my curiosity, and I wanted to share it with you. This is Fire Officials' Reclaim Report of Possible Meteor Strike in Bowie. This is Bowie, Maryland. This was on April 25th, 2016. And we're going to come down here, where this was put out by the Bowie Volunteer Fire Department. Possible meteorite strike behind Scarlet Oak Terrace causing a massive brush fire. And then we're going to come up here and see that when firefighters made it to the site, there was a large pit, which was 12 to 15 feet wide by 5 to 6 feet deep. And the fire spread to adjacent trees and brush and took approximately 15 firefighters four hours to extinguish. But again, they came out and said, nope, that should have never been put out. The post should have never listed a meteorite as the cause. Okay. Okay, so now we're coming over here. Was it a meteor solving the mystery of New Jersey's tsunami buoy? April 25th, 2016, a tsunami warning device about 200 miles off the coast of New Jersey went into event mode over the weekend, but there were no giant waves threatening the shore. There was speculation that the drop could have been triggered by a meteor because the Lyrid meteor showers were active during the weekend. There also was speculation a submarine could have struck the buoy. So again, this stuff just peaked my curiosity want to share. We're going to move here. Okay, so now here we are, coast to coast. This was from March 30th, 2016. In the first half of the show, retired investigative researcher Bob Fletcher talked about his contention that a rogue Planet X, or Nibiru, is coming our way, and the disastrous effects it could have for Earth. He first became suspicious that something was afoot when he discovered that massive amounts of money were being funneled out of the government and the Federal Reserve. 
He concluded that these funds were surreptitiously used for the construction and stocking of underground facilities that will house the elite and members of the New World Order while the arrival of Planet X wreaks cataclysms upon the planet's surface. According to his sources, the knowledge of Planet X dates as far back as 1983. So again, I was just like, well, that's interesting. And so we're coming over here because I remember hearing about Rumsfeld talking about the missing $2.3 trillion that they couldn't track on September 10th. And we all know what happened on September 11th, 2001. Nobody was talking about the missing money. So I Googled just to see, you know, and there was this one, which brought me over here. So here we are, debunked. Rumsfeld says $2.3 missing from the Pentagon. In 2001, Donald Rumsfeld said, according to some estimates, we cannot track $2.3 in transactions. This has been misinterpreted by many people as $2.3 actually going missing. However, it's really just about the way the money was accounted for. So here's the original source. Go look at it for yourself, right? Okay. Oh, well, golly gee. Page not found. Okay, well, there was another link, right? Here, we can also see this. Huh. No input file specified, but yes, there was. So, again, this was something, this has gone long, but it really, really piqued my curiosity. And I wanted to share it because, you know, again, you know, trying to put the pieces together. Here we are. Uh, he first became suspicious that something was afoot when he discovered that massive amounts of money were being funneled out of the government. And then, you know, I don't know. This just made me go, hmm, that's interesting. What we have discovered is that numerous features of the Kuiper Belt, a field of icy debris beyond the orbit of Neptune, can be understood if the solar system possesses an additional ninth planet that resides well beyond the orbits of the known planets. When we looked at the outer solar system, we, we realized that while most of the, the very distant objects, these objects beyond Neptune, beyond Pluto, most of these objects, they, they all go around the sun and they're all sort of pointing off in all different directions, but the most distant objects all swing out in one direction in, in, in a very strange way that shouldn't happen. And we realized that the only way we could get them to all swing in one direction is if there is a massive planet also very distant in the solar system, keeping them in place while they all go around the sun. And we started looking at this and thinking, this, this, is, this must be either a coincidence or it's uh, caused by something else. It can't be caused by a planet because that's crazy. There are no planets out there. I went from trying very hard to be skeptical that what we were talking about was true to suddenly thinking, oh, this actually might even be true. So the object itself likely is more massive than the Earth probably a little bit less massive than Neptune. It sits right in between that terrestrial to giant icy planet range. Its orbit, unlike the orbits of the known planets, is not nearly circular and planar. Instead, it is exceptionally wide, 20 times bigger than the orbit of Neptune. The orbital period of the Earth is, of course, one year. Right? The orbital period of Jupiter, the big player in our solar system, is about 10 years. The orbital period of this putative ninth planet is 20,000 years. We have nothing like it in the solar system, so it's new for us. It is, however, the most common mass of planets that have been found around all of the other stars. People have always looked at all these other planets in this strange mass range and said, wow, I wonder what these are. I don't know what these are because we don't have anything like it in the solar system. Looks like maybe we do. There are many telescopes on the Earth that actually have a chance of being able to find it. And I think that uh, many people will be inspired to use their telescopes. I'm really hoping that as we announce this, people, people start a, uh, a worldwide search to go find this ninth planet. History shows us that it's a bad idea to consistently say we have now reached the end of the solar system and there's nothing beyond what we already know. And all those people who are mad that Pluto is no longer a planet can be thrilled to know that there's a real planet out there still to be found. Hace unos días la NASA anunció oficialmente el descubrimiento del de llamado noveno planeta. 
para algunos reconocido como Ercóbulus, Nibiru o Planeta X. Como usted sabe, el primer registro de él aparece en tablas sumerias de más de 5.000, 6.000 años de antigüedad. Y hasta el día de hoy había sido una leyenda. Hoy sabemos que efectivamente existe un cuerpo masivo, muy grande, muy posiblemente del tamaño de los grandes planetas de nuestro sistema solar, que tiene una órbita alrededor del Sol, se dice de 20.000 años. Todavía hay mucho que aprender y de saber de este misterio, ya que hasta el día de hoy no se le ha logrado fotografiar. Aquí le presento la investigación de Fernando Correa. Un equipo de astrónomos afirman tener evidencias de la existencia del noveno planeta. Nadie lo ha observado. Sin embargo, se ha logrado determinar que se localizaría 20 veces más lejos que Neptuno. Sería entre 10 y 20 veces más grande que la Tierra. Se piensa que es muy oscuro y que tiene una órbita muy alargada dando una vuelta al Sol cada 20.000 años. Estos cálculos son posibles gracias a las observaciones de las órbitas de 14 planetoides más allá de Neptuno, en el cinturón de Kuiper. La posición, dirección y órbitas de estos planetoides no se pueden entender a menos que exista un enorme planeta muy masivo que determinaría la posición de los planetoides. Sería el quinto en tamaño después de Júpiter, Saturno, Urano y Neptuno. Esta es la investigación del noveno planeta que está siendo relacionado con el llamado planeta oscuro, conocido como Nibiru o Herculobus, el planeta bíblico. El 20 de enero del 2016, astrónomos del Caltech de Estados Unidos, Mike Brown y Constantin Batiguin, anunciaron que tenían evidencias de la existencia real del noveno planeta. What we have discovered is that numerous features of the Kuiper Belt, a field of icy debris beyond the orbit of Neptune, can be understood if the solar system possesses an additional ninth planet that resides well beyond the orbits of the known planets. De manera que el campo gravitacional y la dirección de las órbitas de los planetoides en el cinturón de Kuiper se explican por la existencia de un noveno planeta. Mike Brown en 2003 descubrió el planetoide Sedna. En 2005, los planetoides Eris y Makemake. Y en 2016 explica por qué existe el noveno planeta. When we looked at the outer solar system, we, we, we realized that while most of the, the very distant objects, these objects beyond Neptune, beyond Pluto, most of these objects, they, they all go around the sun and they're all sort of pointing off in all different directions, but the most distant objects all swing out in one direction in, in, in a very strange way that shouldn't happen. And we realized that the only way we could get them to all swing in one direction is if there is a massive planet also very distant in the solar system keeping them in place while they all go around the sun. Aunque existen evidencias de la existencia del noveno planeta, aún no ha sido observado. Sin embargo, ya se está buscando con los mayores telescopios del mundo. Se calcula deberá ser observado los próximos cinco años. La confirmación de su descubrimiento seguramente resolverá el enigma del planeta oscuro llamado Nibiru o Herculobus. El planeta bíblico conocido como Ajenjo, un planeta que se describe en la tablilla de Berlín, de las crónicas de los sumerios. El noveno planeta está siendo relacionado con Nibiru en una investigación que continuará, informó Fernando Correa.